What's up, ladies and gentlemen, gamers across the gaming sphere? This is the Play Legit Podcast, Mission 3. I'm your host, Corey Elijah, here with my co-host, KJ. What's going on, man? Hey, man, what is happening? Man, it's been it's been a wild week, man. But uh, before we get into anything, we do have to send out some condolences, unfortunately. Now, if you're a gamer, which we're assuming you are, I mean, you you all know about cheat codes and the most iconic cheat code up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B.A. start its creator, Kazuhisa Hashimoto, unfortunately, has passed. Um, you know, he's the one that has, you know, put these cheat codes into the lexicon before him. There was no actual cheat codes in video games. And now you think about all of the games that you wouldn't even play if there wasn't codes like Grand Theft Auto and things like that. Uh, you know, the grandfather of the, the Konami code has unfortunately passed again. Kazuhisa Hashimoto has unfortunately passed at the age of 61. So we just wanted to give him a special shout out. I definitely appreciate the groundwork that he's done for gaming because like I said, there's so many games that you you want they just wouldn't be as as fun if you didn't have cheat codes, you know. Uh so unfortunately again, uh our our condolences go out to the the grandfather of the cheat code. Um you know, and Konami, they've been doing their thing, you know, lately, not their thing, but their own thing lately. And uh, <laughs> there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of history behind, you know, the, these codes like, you know, in Contra where you could get um, 30, start off with 30 lives instead of just, you know, the three lives that you would start off with in Contra. Uh, the, the same code would work in Ca Castlevania and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Uh, on, on uh, Nintendo NES, so uh, big, you know, big, warm condolences just sent out to him uh, and his family and his loved ones and all the gamers that are feeling the pain. Um, you know, it was trending on Twitter today, which is nice to see, you know, because you don't, you know, a lot of people may not have even known who he was. A lot of celebrities, a lot of big names, Xavier Woods from the WWE, they have a, a podcast that basically is uh, titled after this cheat code. So, you know, the, a lot of people have been showing love, sending out their condolences, and we want to do the same. Um, because when our legends, they, they, they die, you know, you got to give them their flowers, you know. It, it'd be nice if we can start giving them their flowers more. And maybe eventually, uh, sometime, sometime down the line, maybe we can start highlighting, you know, some like lesser known um, OGs and like, you know, very important people in the gaming industry on the podcast, just to make sure we can start giving them their flowers before they, they pass away, you know? Yeah, I'm with that, man. And RIP for sure. Yeah, man. Um, on that note, we're going to get into something a little lighter. Um, we got some pretty good news and this is kind of in the same vein of like a throwback, but a throwback that's coming back a title that I know, KJ, you've been super excited about. I was excited when you told me they were actually making this. I was like, oh, snap. Um, and we've been we've known about it for a while, but there's some new uh, some new information that's come out uh, over the past day or so. Uh, I'm talking about Streets of Rage 4. So, I mean, I'm super pumped that we got a new character that's going to be in the game and some also also some some multiplayer news about the title as well. So, uh, what are your thoughts so far on Streets of Rage 4? I know you're a fan. Well, I'm a big-time fan, and, you know, ever since the initial trailer, I know some people maybe weren't fans of the art style. I completely love the art direction. I really like what they've done with uh, Axel and the rest of them, uh, giving, making Axel look more, like, uh, just older and just kind of just kind of worn down and beat up. But, the like, the art is just really good, and I, I really want to see some videos on – uh, the people who uh, who are putting together these sprites because 2D is is takes it takes a while that is a, that's part of the big reason why you don't see a lot of that anymore because it takes a long time they have to sit there and hand draw every single frame mm -hmm. and it looks like that that's what they're doing with this newest Streets of Rage I mean there's a reason why you know King of Fighters Street Fighter they don't do that anymore <laughs> it's, it is it's a lot to do right. so I have a lot of respect for people who 
take the time to do that. And then the fact that they have the composers coming back from the original Streets of Rage, that is phenomenal. That soundtrack is going to be thumping. I mean, just alone to check out the soundtrack, I'm excited. But then you get the three classic characters, and then you get two new ones. And then, like you were saying about the multiplayer, so they're going to have two players online um, and four-player co-op local. So I will say that it sounds like the four-player co-op will not be online, but at least it's available offline. So that's something, again, like that's, that's new to the series. So you'll be able to play with four people local, rock out to some awesome music, and just beat some people's heads in, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm super pumped for it, honestly. Uh, especially the four player local that's that's one of those things where you know you're hanging out with the buddies uh you know you, if you got four sticks you you know you all can just grab the sticks and go through and and, and bust some skulls man and knock some heads off definitely and it, it's nice because i mean streets of rage you have the nostalgia factor in it as well but it being updated like you said them bringing back the original composers uh, you know, they're even bringing back the base, the basted chicken. I mean, every, you know, everything you know and love about Streets of Rage is coming back, but it's going to be updated, uh, new and improved uh, for, you know, for this generation. So it's super dope that they're also bringing uh, three of the original characters, but then we're getting some, some new characters as well. So of course, Axel, Axel Stone, we're going to have, you know, we know and love him. We have Blaze Fielding. Cherry Hunter, Adam Hunter, and then just announced uh, yesterday was Floyd Aria. I'm butchering his name. We'll go with that. Yeah, we'll we'll go with that for now. I'm sure they'll <laughs> tell us exactly. But he looks he looks super dope because he's he's like way bigger than everybody else. He has the, like the the metal arms. He looks like like Jax or something like that. Um, so he looks like he's going to be a fun character to play with, just, you know, grabbing people from some of the, some of the animations we were able to see. He's picking people up over his head, tossing people and stuff. So he definitely looks like he's going to be a dope character to play with. And then the combos as well, you know, especially with the, the two player online, being able to mix up your characters and get some combos in on some people, you know, having, you know, Floyd pick someone up maybe have uh, Axel do some uppercuts on people, you know, get, just getting some combinations in, or even, you know, locally with four players, just just having a, a, a crazy scene of, you know, a bunch of baddies and you and your homies just, you know, hanging out and just, you know, busting skulls. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun game. Uh, it was always a fun game. It was one of those, one of the, my favorite games growing up, just because it was one of, one of like the few side-scrolling multiplayer games that I could play, you know, with my brothers and stuff. So it was always fun. Always I got a confession to make, man. Hmm. Now, the I will say this, man, and this is, I'd say like this is probably an unpopular opinion, but I do not like Streets of Rage as much, uh, Part 3 as much as uh, 1 and 2, because Part 3, I just didn't like some of the newer characters they introduced, and I did not like the music, not even close as much as I liked the uh, the music in one and two, I think it just went too farther, too far, like doing like the party rave stuff. Mm. And I think it kind of, I think the tone kind of strayed away too much from the, the tone set in the first two. But with that being said, what I like what they're doing with four, I see a little bit of elements of three, but it's not overdone. And, but I'm seeing a lot more of that, that street focus that they had in one and two. And it just seems like they, they took stuff that, that worked for me in three, but they really were focused with one and two. It seems like that's like their main focus in four mm. uh, from what I've seen thus far. Right, right. I definitely agree with that too. Um, when, I, when I think of Streets of Rage, I typically tend to forget about three. Just in the lexicon, now that you're bringing it up, I remember it being like, I, I remember the feel and I don't really have the connection with three like I've had with like one and two, you know? The new characters, um, like you said, and then like the whole atmosphere, it was it was a lot different, and it could have just been the times as well. You know, uh, the '90s was kind of it was different. You know, especially once you got to like the mid the mid '90s and stuff, like things. You know, Everything had to be extreme, bro. Yeah, exactly. Jim <laughs> jeans, all that stuff. So, 
people are definitely partying and raving. That's when like raves were getting popular. And so, I mean, I was a kid, but I mean, I remember I've watched TV from the nineties and you can kind of tell where they were. And uh, yeah, I wasn't really about it that much either, but one and two definitely, definitely uh, even hold up to this day. In my opinion, I'd like for them Absolutely. to even like re-release those if they could maybe in, in some sort of fashion. Well, the thing is, that's another reason why I was just, I mean, when the trailer came out for Streets of Rage 4, yes, I was happy like everybody else, but it was more like, it is about time, because there have been so many systems where they keep re-releasing 1, 2, and 3, just like they do Sonic, you know, I get why they re-release Sonic, because they got bills to pay, and I understand that, because it's Sonic, and it's, it's an iconic franchise, mm. but they probably re release Streets of Rage as much as they've re-released Sonic the Hedgehog, and I'm like, y'all are re-releasing Streets of Rage this often, but you're, you're making new Sonic games, but no new Streets of Rage, <laughs> and so they finally put the video, I was like, okay, finally, here we are. Why'd it take so long? Yeah, I definitely feel you. It's, um, I'd like them to see, I'd even like to see them, like, expand the characters into, like, some, maybe even some different titles, you know? Can we get Axel and Smash or something? Like, you know, just, just for more buzz. Now, I, I mean, I know Sega still has, I mean, I believe primary control over the, the IP, is it the same studio from before Dota Dotemu Dotemu? Yeah, it's the it, uh, so this is the company that did um oh my god I can't think of it right now the game with the dragon they did a they did the remastering of that game okay um Spyro. No, it was no. the dra the dragon's tail. It had like a oh man, I I'll just have to look it up. Uh, dragon's but, uh, Wonder Boy, the Dragon's Trap. Yes, yes. Okay. So they they handled the remastering of that, and if you look at the animation, the kind of the coloring and the way that it is, it, mm. you can notice it's it is similar to Streets of Rage. Mm. Um, but they handled the remastering of that, and then these fellas are the ones who are now making this game. But uh, it was a, it, they're a new developer for this series, mm. so this is th this is the first time they're taking it on. But the the main thing that they bring back was the composers from the original, and that's what they did. So Yuzo Koshiro. Mm. Yeah, and then they have this uh, they have this montage here, this video that they released behind the art where they, you know, kind of came up with the character designs, um, even like the postures and the stances from the, you know, the original sprites, and then transformed them, updated them, and made them, you know, new and improved for this generation. So they're putting in a lot of work, um, which I'm glad to see. Uh, I can't wait to be able to play the game, actually. Uh, even, I mean, I can't, even if I could get like a little demo or something just to kind of get a taste that would be pretty cool, but I'll wait for it to come out completely too, you know. Um, but it's going to be dope. It's going to be fun. It looks great. Like you said, the music's going to be amazing as well. So, and it's in that vein of Streets of Rage 1 and 2, which is going to be really, really sick. So I'm super excited for it. Glad to see that they're doing it. And a lot of the screen caps, uh, captures that they have of it, like it looks like it's going to look really, really good. Like the, you know, the background you know, the, just the environments, they look really dope. Um, like almost like an updated Streets of, updated Streets of Rage, which is <laughs> cool, uh, which it is, but you know. I think that's the point, Corey. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, but it just like, it looks just like an up, like it's not different, you know. Sometimes, you know, people get their hands on these IPs and they kind of switch it up too much. But this looks yeah, like and that's what I thought was the flaw with Streets of Rage 3. That's my main gripe with that game. Mm. Yeah, so I can't wait to see it. It's gonna. I can't wait to get my hands on it and play it. Um, yeah, and we'll have to do some run-throughs uh, online when this drops, too. Maybe we can do some uh, streaming or something. That would be cool. Uh, one other thing, too, I'd like to say is 
I do hope that they have more combos because, you know, it worked in Genesis, the limited combos, because it just fit, you know, for that time period. But because uh, we're, we're, in, we're in 2020 now, uh, I think it would be great if maybe they had more combos that you could pull off, maybe uh, upgradable, unlockable mm. sets as well. Um, I think, I mean, I can understand if not, because, again, they're sitting there hand-drawing everything. And they're an indie company, so I can understand if not, but it would be cool if we could uh, extend combos and do some of the these double up moves that you were kind of saying earlier. Uh, I think that that would really add more longevity to the game. Right. And as of right now, I'm just peeping to see if they. Yeah, there's no official release date. So, just I mean, spring. Yeah, it just says uh, twenty twenty for us right now. So if it doesn't get pushed back further from the spring, um, yeah, we'll be looking at it. But I mean, they've been working on the game for uh, a little while now. So I mean, hopefully we can get some, like you said, some of the, some of those unlockable things, um, upgrades or things of that nature, or at least unlockable move sets, just to kind of make it more. Uh, robust but we'll see we'll see when we get our hands on it either way i think it's going to be a fun game um i'm curious to see what the price point is going to be um depending on how much is in the game you know if you know what i mean um because say for instance if there's not like the unlockable uh move sets or upgradable move sets things of that nature i'm thinking this it should maybe be like a $40 price point, but I also don't want to take anything away, you know, away from them. But if it's really limited, you know, I mean, we're, we're at play legit. We give fair reviews, you know, we're, we're anticipating this game. Um, but if it's lackluster, we're definitely going to let you know. I'll just leave it at that. And there it is. Yes, sir. So let's move on. Um, and this is, this is going to be, this is going to be fun because we're talking about, an updated Streets of Rage. Well, now let's talk about some updated consoles. Uh, we just got a bunch of information, literally tons of information on the new Xbox Series X console. Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, dropped a letter on xbox.com just detailing tons of stuff. So we'll go through some of this. And then we'll talk a little bit about the PS5, the secretive PS5 we're on the PlayStation website, literally on here right now that I'm looking at it. It says PS5, PlayStation 5 is coming, launches holiday 2020. Don't tell we've, nobody. We've begun to share some of the incredible features you can expect from PlayStation 5, but we're not quite ready to fully unveil the next generation of PlayStation. Sign up below. So literally it's it says that you've told us stuff, but it doesn't say anything on this page. So, I mean, we'll do some further digging just to find out there's so many rumors and you know it's it's i wish sony would just just tell us what you told us and put it in a place where i can find it easily so i'm not taking hearsay because all the articles that i've been looking through it's like things that we'd like to see and i'm like well what do they officially say because they're right. saying they told us something but i'm not finding anything you're not saying that they told you so um and i don't want to give people false information or stuff that you know and Gadget said that doesn't end up actually being, you know, what it is or whatnot. So. That's one thing about Play Legit that I've always, I've always had a rule on this site is we don't post any news unless it's confirmed. We don't post rumors. We don't, we don't do none of that mess. So if it's if it's real and it's happening, it's going to be on the site. But if we cannot com confirm that, it's not going to be on the site. Yeah, we're not trying to clickbait you guys. We just we keep it legit. Hence the name. So let's uh here I'll run through some of this uh some of this letter from Phil Spencer. And it's I mean we we know what this the Series X looks like. Now personally I don't like the name. Um but I'm also biased when it comes to the debate between Xbox and PlayStation. I've just always been a PlayStation Nintendo guy. Um so I mean I'm going to be fully transparent about that. Um but as of right now, we know what the Xbox Series X looks like. That name is going to be a pain to say over and over again for however long we're going to be in this generation of gaming. 
I wish they would have picked a name that was a little bit easier to say. Like, hey, do you want to play the Series X? Like, I mean, I guess, but I don't know. I guess Maybe. you're doing it wrong, man. You got to say uh, the XSX. No, that's a, that's a uh, tongue twister, man. <laughs> say that that's all like that snowboarding fact. game, don't it? SSX. The EA big game. Yeah. SSX. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'd like to see them bring that back, but I digress. So the fastest, the, the new Xbox Series X, fastest, most powerful. And as you can see, everybody out there, if you looked at the photos of the Series X, it's a, it's a, it's basically a, a mini rectangle. fridge. Like yeah, a mini fridge basically. Uh, <laughs> uh, the lower part of a table, like all the memes, uh, whatever, whatever you want to say. And then the Xbox controller looks like the Xbox controller that we have now, um, the Pro controller. So. What you, uh, what you can expect from the next generation of gaming. A letter from Phil Spencer, head of Xbox. The future of gaming has never been more inspiring. Creativity in games is flourishing. New services empower you to discover more games and bring you closer to the games and creators you, and streamers you love. The cloud creates a massive opportunity to stream console quality games and play with the people you want. Let me stop you right there. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the last generation when they first announced the Xbox One, they were talking about how they were going to invest so much into the cloud and they were going to do this and that and that and this. Where where was that, for the most part, at all for Xbox this generation? Or, in, or PlayStation either. I mean, both of them. When you were playing on a PC, <laughs> playing Xbox games on a PC. That's about it. But but the initial console, the, the driving, one of the big selling points was that focus on, well, TV mm. <laughs> was a big one, and the cloud. And it's right. like, uh, anyway, continue, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, where, where are them servers at? Where yeah. are them servers at? I mean, it's, they always, I mean, I feel like maybe they had big dreams, and then they realized they didn't have the capabilities to do it. And now that, you know, cloud computing is so much better than it was when this current generation uh, first started, maybe now they've realized like, okay, we can actually really do it this way now. Um, because it seemed like even with this current gen, the PS4 and the Xbox One, they've, uh, they even made updated consoles that could run a little heavier and sold those just because it had like finally got to the point where games were so huge. Like Red Dead 2 has been out for what, almost a year now. And that game is massive. And now we're finally at the point where these games are so huge. I was running through my library of just games that I had, and I was comparing them because Red Dead is so, I mean, it takes so much space compared to some of the initial games that we were playing on the PS4 or on the Xbox One. So maybe they're finally at the point where like, okay, we've created all the stuff. You know, the, the games are large enough. We've actually had time to build these giant worlds. Uh, to actually try to uh, initiate, you know, some of this cloud stuff. So maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe their eyes are bigger than their stomachs. Who knows? But hopefully this gen, uh, it'll actually be what they said it was going to be and not at the end of the generation. And be like, <laughs> right. We need to sell you another console now. Like, you know. Just don't just don't make it a prime selling point if, if you're not all in on it. That That's my only deal. Right, right, right. And look at the stadia, you know. Oh God, that look that the, <laughs> it's wild. That's a that's another podcast right there. Don't <laughs> get me started on that. <laughs> I mean, that's that's that cloud gaming. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the the pros will get it done right the first or the second time, I guess. Um, you play on that thing for an hour, and you've already used the data for your whole household. Right. <laughs> All right, I'm done. No, that's all, it, it's all good. Hopefully, uh, yeah, and the the five G rollout. I mean, this is like there's there's like a perfect storm brewing for this to actually work. Uh, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, for many of us, nothing is more inspiring than the dawn of a new console generation. 
we know you expect the next generation of consoles to set new standards in graphical power and processing speed, converging together in games that look incredible and feel alive. This will be defined by worlds that are visually astounding and immediately immersive with, in a, with innovative leaps in CPU, GPU, and storage technology to give you frictionless access to new st stories and new creators constantly. Um, so then he also details saying, we've been using Xbox Series X in our internal take-home program and are energized by the feedback we've been receiving. At Xbox, we value being open and transparent with you. Okay. Um, and I'm proud to be able to share details about some of the technologies we are enabling for the next generation and look forward to boldly sharing more as we head towards E3. All right, so they're going to be at E3. We know Sony's not going to, they're not showing up, but uh, at least we, we're going to get a lot of presenta a big presentation from Xbox, it's looking like. Um, so it says there's a superior balance of power and speed, and I don't want to read this entire thing, so I'll go through the bullet points. Next generation custom processor. So they're saying that they're going to use uh, their most powerful console. It'll be powered by uh, a custom design processor, leveraging AMD's latest Zen 2 and RDNA 2 architectures, uh, del delivering four times the processing power of the Xbox One and enabling developers to le leverage 12 teraflops of GPU. Uh, so 12 teraflops of graphic performance. Uh, so, Do you think that 12 teraflops is enough or were you expecting more? Um, I mean, for what? I, I mean, in the early stages, I mean, 12 teraflops should be good um, to process. I mean, people generally, I mean, we're going to be, people are going to be gaming maybe max on 4K TVs for the next few years until people really start getting into 8K. Um, I mean, there's still people that don't have 4K televisions because it's it's not really necessary. Um, I have a 4K TV, but mine is from 2015, and I really have no thoughts of buying a new television because it still looks great. Um, so maybe if the price starts dropping down where you're seeing 4K TVs at the price of what you can get a 1080p TV for right now, but even then, 12 teraflops will be good. Um, because you're going to have that, you know, that graphical power, it's going to look amazing. Um, but when you when you get into that 8K gaming, that's when you're going to really need that power, and just for for it to transfer and and look really good. Um, so I mean, right away, I mean, it looks like it'll it'll start off as overkill, but as the years go on, especially with the exponential growth of technology, things are going to just, I mean things are going to be going by really, really fast. I mean, this tech honestly should double within two years. Um, and, you know, depending on how things go, especially with how things move, especially with PC gaming, I mean, people are updating their rigs all the time. Every six months or so, there's new chips that come out uh, and people are upgrading to those new chipsets and they want their games to be able to play at the highest, you know, highest level uh, possible so i mean 12 teraflops should be good but i mean when it comes to longevity that's still kind of up in the air for me um i'm not an expert but just based off of the information that i do have you know i dabble in tech um you know from time to time you know so i i know what a lot of these things mean but i'm not an expert um but i'm i'm thinking long long term like i'm not sure you know, how long are how how long of a life are they trying to get out of these consoles? And it's unfortunate that we're here, but that's where we're at. And that's what I'm I'm intrigued to find out like why is Sony holding out all of their information? Why don't they want people to know what it is until it comes out? Is it gonna are you gonna be able to customize it? Are you gonna be able to swap your chipsets? What it you know, you know, what is it gonna be? If they go with that move, I mean that's gonna be groundbreaking because then you'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to update your console like you can update a PC. And that's what, honestly where we kind of really need to get to. So, um, but 12 teraflops is, is, I mean, things are going to be looking amazing. And like I said, until people, everybody's doing 8K gaming, it's, we should be good. I, I hear what you're saying um, about, 
you know, you'd like it to get that way. But you you have to understand too, these kids. Now mm-hmm. the kids that just that let's say they, they work or they work. <laughs> if they went to school all day, they want to come home and play a game. Mm-hmm. Now is should little Timmy be thinking about does he have the latest chip to put into his system? Or should little Timmy just put the game in and get going? Little Timmy should just put the game in and get going. <laughs> So I'm saying, like, I'm just very interested, like you're saying, how they're going to handle that because there's a market for people that are like, yeah, let's upgrade, let's load it up, let's let's keep getting it. But then there's also people that just don't have the time for that. Right. Like, I'm I'm getting to the point now where I got so much going on where I'm just blessed that I can play a game for an hour. I'm not thinking about, all right, I need to get this, I need to get that. I already spent my money on the system, but I, now I got to do this. I gotta do that, mm. but I ain't trying to rain on your parade here, Chief. But I'm just saying. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I definitely feel you because the, that's and that's the challenge that they're gonna have, right? Because also, if you look at it, if you think about it from this perspective, right? With the limited time that you have, you're not gonna waste time and go on Twitter and go complain about anything either. But then there's also all these people, especially people like streamers who they're, they say they're trying to cater to and people people with the time to do it that will do it, you know? I mean, that that's the conundrum that we're in. People, pe- some people have time to complain and they're going to complain. Other people may have time to complain, but they're also, you know, they just are, it's not that big of a deal to them as long as it's going to do what it's going to do. But we also live in, the culture has gotten more, it's 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 gotten more uh, spoiled in a way you know there's so much information people know what things can do and people want what they have to be the best and if it's not the best they're going to crap on it um and i think that's kind of the issue that they ran into this gen and why they released the, the xbox one uh you know the updated xbox and the ps4 pro um just because people are saying like hey man why is my ps4 like I have a 4K TV. My PS4 is not, it's it's not looking nearly as good as it should on my TV because my yeah. TV is picking up these pixels and it looks crappy now. Why does it look so bad? So, you know, that's 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 what they run into. As all this hardware upgrades, people go online, all these kids are watching streamers online streaming and they're getting the playback on their phones because I mean, most phones now, especially, you know, say if you have like an iPhone or a Galaxy phone or something like that, you're going to have basically like uh, 2K playback on your display. So you're going to be able to see that it looks really, really good. If they're streaming it on their television, if if you have a nice TV, you see their stream coming in and it looks really good. And then when you hook up your game and it doesn't look as good as as the stream look, people are going to be like, oh, it doesn't look how I saw Ninja Boy, you know? And it's just one of those things, especially with kids. Kids have all of the time in the world, and all they all they do is crap on stuff. And whenever they have the chance to crap on something, they will crap on it. Um, so that's just that's the conundrum that that we're in. Um, the little little kids don't have time, but you know the kids that are actually playing these games, 12, 11, 12 year olds, they know what's up. You know it's weird. Because we didn't have this much information when we were young, but they have, I mean, they, they have a wealth of knowledge that is sometimes you can't even comprehend it. Like I have a, I have a six year old and what she knows about stuff. I'm like, how, like, how do you even know about this? Like she knows all, like she plays Minecraft and like Roblox and she knows how all these like tricks and all this. So I'm like, how do you even know this? She's like, oh, I just watch people do it on, on YouTube. Man. So yeah, it's 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 wild times and it's only gonna get more and more like that, you know. These kids are growing up at a time where all they've had access to the universe since they can remember, you know. When we were coming up, like we had Super Nintendo, you know, PlayStation, things like that. We read magazines to get information. It, there wasn't TV shows that really talked about it until, I mean, G4 wasn't popular until, what, like the early, mid-2000s or so, 2004, 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. 
and that was like we had actually had a channel about video games like everything if you like video games now you can know everything about video games at you know in the palm of your hands so it's weird but that's that's the world that we're living in so i like i get i even this is why i even understand why phil spencer put this note out he's like we have to say something because our last console didn't do that well people are still crapping on the xbox we don't have exclusives like that we have to make people believe that this is going to be the best thing ever uh so they're dropping the teraflops on people they're talking about what uh variable rate sh uh, shading so they're saying it's our patented form of VRS and our patented form of VRS empowers developers to more effectively utilize the full power of the Xbox Series X rather than spending GPU cycles uniformly to every single pixel on the screen. They can prioritize individual effects on specific game characters or important environmental objects. This technique results in more stable frame rates and higher resolution with no impact on the final image quality. So again, like this is a bullet point. They're talking about frame rates because when we were young, we didn't care about 60 FPS. We didn't care about even 30 FPS, you know? M most everything was coming in at like 24 and we just, we dealt with it because we didn't even know. We weren't even thinking about it, yeah. yeah. Kids nowadays, they'll see, they can look at it and they can see with their eyes like, this is oh this isn't even sixty this isn't even sixty FPS what is this this is trash like it's it's crazy to think about it like that but it's that's where we're at kids with just too much information and I mean I guess it's not too much information because it's good to know stuff but it's like no one was anticipating kids to know this much stuff so now they got to talk about like oh you don't have to worry because we can just make it direct so you'll never have a drop in your resolution and it'll make your frame rates more stable and it, it won't impact your stream because you know we we don't want to ruin your stream we know you guys love streaming so and then the final image quality as well when your game all of the game capturing that everybody's doing like literally almost everybody streams nowadays not all i mean that's that's probably saying too much but a lot of people are doing streaming. A lot of people are, you know, sharing uh, their gameplay. A lot of people even just record their gameplay to just show their friends uh, later on, you know? Like, I had an ex-coworker that would just, every once in a while, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I was playing Fallout or something. Look what I did on Fallout. I was He wasn't streaming. He just would save, like, random clips of what he would do, and his playback would look good on his phone. So it's just one of those things that, we didn't have the luxury to do when we were kids, but now people are all all on it. Well, with the PS5, I mean, we could probably expect something very similar. I mean, it's just how it's always been. Is if it's like maybe one one thing is slightly better on the other, mm -hmm. maybe one thing is slightly better on the other. But for, for the most part, you're gonna get a pretty similar experience. Am I wrong or am I right? I'm thinking that's what's going to happen. So that's what I'm saying. You're, you're going to get that. And what it's going to have to come down to, I know this is very much a generic answer, but it, it's what it is and it's what it's been. It, it comes down to who's going to have the games. Yeah. So, you know, is Microsoft going to tighten it down with more, you know, Microsoft exclusives? Uh, they, you know, that Hell, Hellblade 2, that's looking good. But mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a system mover. Sure, looking like a good time. Uh, of course, Halo. That's you know, that's gonna move some copies. That's a good uh, one. Yeah, uh, PS Five. Uh, you know, we can. There's titles you can just naturally expect to see on there, like a God of War. Right. Uh, you know, so that's that that that's gonna be on there. So I mean, and you know that you're not gonna be able to get that on on series x so it just who's gonna have the heavy hitting exclusives uh because they're probably even gonna cost i would imagine it probably will cost the same you know maybe 50 dollars difference but pretty much it's gonna be the same i'd say mm. yeah right now confirmed for the ps5 they have this uh title gothic rainbow six siege uh, Outriders. 
that's a uh, that's going to be on current gen also, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yep, but then it's also uh, going to be on PS5 and Series X. So cross gen, cross gen, Lord of the Rings Gollum, which is cross gen. God Cyberpunk, Godfall. Yep, Cyberpunk, uh, and then Cyberpunk. Since you brought that up. I'm not sure what PlayStation's approach is going to be with this, but when Cyberpunk releases, if you buy it on the Xbox One, you get the free upgrade to Xbox Series X. So, I mean, that's that's pretty player. That's a player. Oh, oh, that's boss. Yeah, you don't have to buy it six times like uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Um, <laughs> I, was, I think they're they're still in the top charts, man. They they hustle some folks on that game. Fuck oh yeah, this. oh yeah. I've been I've had a resurgence with uh, GTA Five, uh, GTA Online uh, lately. Honestly, I've been uh, running crews with my brother and some of my friends, just wreaking havoc. It's still pretty fun, and yeah, the game man. the game's been out for what? What was that? Twenty thirteen? It it dropped. So we're looking at seven years, and they're still adding stuff to the game. So, the GTA 6, though, I know that's not official. It's just rumors, but we know it's about to happen eventually. Yeah, that's another topic for another day, but I'll say I've, I really think it sucks that Dan Hauser left Rockstar because he was a big factor in a lot of the games that we've enjoyed from that company for a, a long time. So that that is that is actually a very big move that took place there. Mm. Uh, so I'm hoping that they are able to fill those shoes because that is a big void. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to see. We'll have to play it by ear. That's Yeah, but that is a big loss. It's a real big loss. Last of Us Part 2, that's that exclusive. That's that exclusive he was talking about. Cro cross gen again. No, Last of Us. Last of Us Part Two. No, that's not cross gen. That's uh, Sony. No, I'm talking about uh, PS4, PS5. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, because it's coming out May 29th. So yeah, it's gonna be one of those. I mean, Sony, please don't, please don't gouge us for the money, Sony. Please let us get the free updates. Don't let don't let Microsoft have the one up on you with that. Please. Well, I'm I'm glad that they're both. It seems like they're both embracing backwards compatibility because, you know, it just sucks when when a system comes out. There's like five games, mm -hmm. and three of them are trash. Two of them <laughs> are you'd play them and and get like four hours and then you'd beat them already like rise right. son of rome that rise son of rome when that came out those graphics were amazing but you could beat that game in a setting mm -hmm. in a, in one sitting and then you're like all right now what do i do i'll just play this uh cross platform game so that it, it's cool that it, I, I think that these games that are backwards compatible are actually going to run are going to perform a lot better too so you get to get more enjoyment out of games that you that you already like as you wait for more games to roll out. Mm. And so I, I'm also hoping that the launch titles are, that, that they're not just cross gen and that they are like more like, more than just five games like I was talking about. I want some really awesome re releases. I'm so sick of, I, I still remember man, the Nintendo DS launch lineup. Do you remember that? Mm. This is real random, but I think the best thing they had was a port of Mario 64. <laughs> it's like, dang. For real? The support? Dang. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm just yeah, saying, y'all. I want people to try hard on these. <laughs> yeah, why? Well, I, I kind of do wonder why that is. It, it It is always, like, really slow in the beginning. Almost like the whole first year. It's like, dang, can we just get some games? Y'all haven't been working on games this whole time? Like, you knew it was coming out. And then we get a couple years in, then we start getting a, a, a nice steady rollout of some titles. But I mean, I understand it takes a long time for these games to, to be made, but 
with the AI capabilities that they have now to like create worlds and things of that nature, it's like, it shouldn't, you should be able to have some titles coming out. Um, one thing I'm super pumped for is the SSD storage. That's like, that's a big game changer. I mean, I imagine the PlayStation PS5 is going to run SSDs as well. Um, but that's just going to be, it's going to make it so much easier just to load games. And then you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to have to be able to, you're not going to have to have so much space to actually store these games. So you should be able to have more game save and then shorter loading times, if, you know, barely any loading time at all. So SSD is so much better. Um, and I can't wait to actually experience that in gaming because I mean, I have SSDs on my, on my computer and it just, to just get something to load up to like load a movie. It's just so much faster and you're not waiting for a screen, a bar to go across the screen or anything like that. So super dope that they're doing that. And then the 120, 120 frames per second. I mean, it's really whatever. I mean, my, my TV can't do that. My iPad, can do 120 frames per second. Fortnite on my iPad is pretty nice, but I mean, it's not, it's not like a, it's a game changer, but it's not like a huge game changer. So, well, it's cool that they're making these these features available, but they have to understand too that for the the current consumer right now, that it's not really that important. Right. But at least it's there. You know that that's. I mean, I'd rather have a bunch of stuff that I don't care about than a system that can barely do anything. So, uh, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, it really seems like they're they're trying to make it have longevity. We'll see how it goes because uh, things are changing really, really fast. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Just make sure them servers, you know, that, that, that cloud computing, them servers are right um, because you're making these giant, beautiful, immersive worlds. But, I mean, if I can't, if I can't load a game, then, you know, I don't want to be in a server by myself and trying to play with you. So I look forward to see, I mean, I can't, I look forward to the, some online multiplayer too. being in some rooms with, uh, you know, maybe a few hundred people would, would be pretty dope on some uh, ready player one type type action. You know, So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'm I'm expecting with the newer systems, you got y'all got to understand that at some point we're going to hit a wall when it comes to graphics, okay? And I think that we probably have two more systems. I'd say so this one coming and then the next one after that and I think we're probably going to hit a wall in terms of visuals. Mm. But but power, I think that 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 is going to you're going to keep seeing things. And so what I'm saying when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about for example, my roommate, he loves MLB The Show. So any sports game, when you play that, you know how you look into the crowd, and the crowd, they look like garbage. They look like yeah. they're from a PlayStation 2 game. or So what I expect from these newer systems is that the crowd, everybody in the crowd is detailed and looks just as detailed as the actual athlete that you're playing as. Mm -hmm. I expect from the newer systems – you know when you're playing Dynasty Warriors and you and you're there's a bunch of people on screen and a lot of times the game cannot handle that many people so they do that ghosting effect people disappear and reappear. Mm -hmm. I no. want it where yeah I don't want that anymore. I want to see everybody on screen and I want everybody looking just as detailed as the person I'm playing with. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I'm that I'm going to be looking for now in this new system that I expect to see because these these systems y'all just listed all these specs. Show me something. Yep. I you know what? Dynasty Warriors didn't even cross my mind. It would like you're right. I want to see something like that. Those games are really fun and they could do so much more with it. I mean, I'd like to even see I mean, bring that online. I don't think I haven't played Dynasty Warriors in a minute. That's not online, is it? Yeah, there's a few there's a, a good amount of them that go online, but the online is not not the best. So okay. let they yeah, can I, improve that and also when i'm playing split screen local let's let's not have slowdown and let's not have all that ghosting going on even so mm. I, I, all the power that i was telling you that i want to see i want to see that same thing when i'm playing split screen right. Hy hyrule warriors playing that split screen is an embarrassment mm. 
Have you yeah. ever seen that split yeah. screen? Yeah, I mean, you're, it's it's laughable. It's also on the Switch, which is really really fun. I'm but, saying, but I'm but, but just in general, yeah, Dynasty yeah. Warriors games is on split. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but touche, buddy. I mean. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's it's fun to you know pick up and go. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't expect too much power from that. But I definitely would love to see that you know some like with the twelve teraflops, you should be able to run something like that split screen lo- playing locally it's not like you're trying to broadcast anything you know trying to pull anything from oh you know online or anything like that so you should be able to do that I, you know so we'll see how it goes we'll see if these teraflops are going to be enough to actually run stuff like that what you said about like the crowds that's what i want to see as well uh if i'm playing 2k i want you know the people in the crowd to be looking i don't want everybody to look exactly the same like you'll see like the crowd everybody has the same exact t-shirt on yeah they move a little bit now but like give them personality you know yeah i want to see the crowd i mean it's just the crowd but i want them to be dressed different when you look at a real basketball game everybody's dressed different people have different clothes on some people wear jerseys some people are wearing regular clothes some people have t-shirts on so, I mean, there's kids, there's, uh, there's so much that you can do and you have that capability. Let's see it. And like we were talking about, like I brought up earlier too, with the AI, you, it's not like you have to have a person programming every single, you know, person. All you have to do is have just like a, an arrangement, uh, you know, arrangement of different like clothes that they could possibly wear, um, you know, just different, just different figures male female whatever it may be and just let the ai handle it that's what it's there for that's what you got the processors for let the ai handle that uh and let's get some more realism in there let's 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 see these sports games actually look like real sports games because that's that's all you can really do you know stop changing the release on 2k and start adding more to the background you know there you go make it look beautiful y'all got this with all those VC coins, they can do something <laughs> with that money. That's what I'm saying. My man. goodness. It's a casino <laughs> when I play that game now. Well, I'm pulling a slot machine. Yep. Yeah, I go in there and I spin the wheel from time to time to try to just get some, you know, some free VC or something. But they always hit me with the 500. And I'm like, dang, I wasted my spin. And then they and then they, they purposely make your character, when you start off, just hot garbage, just missing open layups. Because they want you to say, anyway, again, mm. that's another podcast, so <laughs> I'll leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so before we end out, I mean, which, uh, which console are you looking f- forward to more? Are you, look, are you on Team Xbox? You on Team PS5 with the undisclosed information? Or are you, you know, you, you just, you just love gaming, you in the middle? Well, I mean... The mini fridge team, they have shown me something. Mm. And it's kind of hard to get behind another company that has shown me nothing. Mm. But with that being said, what they have shown me from Xbox is great, but I still need to see the games. Mm. So, I mean, your system could could cook me dinner, pay my bills, but if it doesn't play good games... Well, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, if it's paying my bills, I might cop it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, but, uh, no, but I, but it, the thing is, I've got to see some some games. I mean, like like I said, Hellblade 2, that, that's great. But that for me, that's not like, oh, I got to get that. Um, so, it, for me, it is very much still up in the air uh, because that's what it comes down to because – PS2 was not as powerful as Xbox, but it definitely outsold Xbox because because what? What was the reason for that? Because it had them games, man. So that's not going to change. I don't care what systems we're rolling with, what generation it is. If you don't have the games, buddy, ain't nobody coming to shop. Yeah, that's facts. <laughs> that's facts. I mean, look at the Switch. The Switch don't got no specs, really. No. But it got them games, man. It has those IPs that are like like crack, man. People need that Mario Kart. 
They need that Smash Bros. And that's the thing. It you know, so th- then that's that really drives home the point where it truly is about the games because like listen, Xbox Series X they released all these specs and that is good on them. Like that's good stuff. Mm. But again, if they're not bringing it with, in the with the software, it can be as powerful as it wants to be. Mm. I'm getting PS5. <laughs> so <laughs> that's facts, man. That's definitely facts. Yeah. And it seems like I don't know. Not, I'm I'm not trying to throw shade at Xbox because I mean, I'm I'm impressed by what they're showing spec-wise just cuz like I said, I mean, I'm into that type of stuff, but I mean, at the end of the day, PlayStation is my one true love and if I mean, if it's neck and neck <laughs> It's neck and neck. I'm going with Sony, and you know you could even even if Sony charges me to buy the game again, and they don't give me the free upgrade on you know Cyberpunk or something like that, I'm still gonna have to go with them. If they have more titles, if you know, and we know they're probably gonna end up with more titles. Let's just be honest. What's happened in the last two gens? That's what's happened. So I mean. That's what we're gonna have to do. You can play Call of Duty on anything. Cyberpunk is cross cross platform. So I mean, even if it's not free, I mean, if there's other games that I can buy, then I'm I'm riding with the PlayStation. But I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll play by ear. Corey's slow dancing with Sony right now. Um, you, I mean, hey, I like. <laughs> I like uh, He's holding that black box in his hand, just. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, like I said. Oh, and also, uh, what? Um, I mean, it's all it's all just been speculative. But what they're saying that the PS5 controller is the capabilities of it are going to be. We'll talk about it once it once it's officially released. But if it's true what they're saying, and there's leaked information, is that's the controller itself is going to be groundbreaking. And if the controller is groundbreaking, I can only imagine what the console is going to be like. So we'll definitely have a podcast on that when we get more information on that. Uh, But it's been a great talk. We want to know what you guys think. Are you team Xbox or your team PlayStation? Are you team, hey, whoever got the games, I'm riding with them. We want to know. Hit us up on Twitter at PlayLegit. Um, Comment below in the YouTube, YouTube comments as well. Just let us know what you guys think. Um, it's been a great talk. Before we head out, KJ, you got anything else you want to add? I had my tooth pulled out today, but I was still was very blessed to be here to talk about these systems, fighting through that pain. Actually, no, I'm 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 on like like Tylenol and stuff, so I actually don't feel any pain. Uh, but okay, I'm just rambling on. So anyway, it's been a great chat. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely been a, it's been a good talk, man. I definitely uh, definitely had a great time. I can't wait to get more information on this, you know, on this next gen that's coming up. And be, before we go, we do just want to send one more condolence out uh, to Kazuhisa Hashimoto. Um, thanks for all the you know the the code culture that you created for us. Like I said, there's so many games that I wouldn't have had interest in if I didn't have cheat codes. I mean, I'm, I may not love Grand Theft Auto as much as I do now if, if back when GTA 3 didn't have cheat codes. So uh, a big shout out to him. Our condolences go out to him. And until next time, guys, stay legit. Peace.